We have all had our tea, coffee, monvita. So I'm expecting you're all charged up to listen to me. Let's give you a complaint with Naresh Bhaiya. Okay, so good evening everyone. My topic for today is the coffee mug paradigm. Uh, I see a few puzzled expressions out here. So the thing is, uh, I'll be presenting on lean product marketing. But honestly, I did not want to bore you guys to death with a lecture. So I thought I'll just spice things up a bit. So I thought we'll go ahead with a case study and explain it to you through, explain this concept to you through a case study. So let's get into it. So what is this case study all about? It's about this, the coffee mug. Now, startups have been going nuts over it. I mean, when I say nuts, absolute nuts. The sector of this case study, that is the target sector is food delivery, has covered three companies, Tiny Out, Dine Out, and Swiggy. The goodie offered is, as I said, the coffee mug. And the marketing strategy implemented is relentless focus on distribution of free coffee mugs to attract customers to stalls. So essentially, these three had put up their stalls and they were distributing free coffee mugs in exchange for a few, in exchange to execute a few business models. So let's get into a bit more details, a bit more situation analysis. So the model was offline marketing to stalls at various locations. The peak time to engage with consumers was in three brackets. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The total time for engagement per day would be 420 minutes. And the research, research location was Bayrock, SEZ, Hyderabad, India. Now, we have had a basic overview. We have gone well into a bit of details. Let's test the data was for this. So, here I have defined a few metrics as to how we can proceed with the case study. The first is staff at each stall, the number of people present and executing their business strategy for the respective brand. The stall strength, that is the number of stalls put up in that location. The number of days, which is again 2, 2 and 1, tiny out was only for one day. Uh, the cashback offered, tiny out, tiny out offered 100 rupees, so maybe no cashback. Tiny out was 100% up to rupees 150. The max distributed was this. The stall decoration, I'll get into this a little, a little bit later. The so orders achieved and mugs distributed, we had a bit of a calculation to do that and explain it. And the engagement time, as mentioned previously, was 420, 420, and 300 minutes since tiny hour was only for one day. So, we have had a basic overview. We have delved into a bit of details. We have seen a bit of data. But, it still doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, this is what happens in real life scenarios. A chief marketing officer will come to me, that is a product manager, and tell me, I have this, this, and this. But it's somewhat measurable. But is it actually working? So how do we do that? How do we find that out? So the thing, the problems that I found here were that it's not really lean. It's not really, you know, not really adaptive to the market. <coughs> Where are the key performance indicators? Now we had metrics. But we didn't essentially have key performance indicators. If KPIs did exist, which facets of a coordinated marketing campaign are having a positive impact on them? To put it in simple words, I had metrics, but I did not have KPIs to point out this works, this doesn't work. In order to understand all of this, let's introduce a concept called Lean Product Marketing. So I'll get into a bit of theory before I can explain it to you in a more practical aspect. Validating learning and being able to judge the needs of consumers. <coughs> Identifying the minimum viable product and being agile in the approach with respect to marketing. Values experimentation over planning. Testing and metrics, metrics are vital to the growth of the product. So let's apply this concept. We we'll go into the business cases of each. Now, what Dynaut had was, you install, go ahead, make some entries into the register, install the app, they'll give you a code, you get a credit of rupees 100, 100 into the app, and you get a free coffee mug. For Swiggy, it was, you install the app, place a minimum order of 50 rupees, along with a code that they give you, and then you get a fund. Whereas for Tiny Out, they had two options. One is, you go to their stall, they directly hand you over a 
a coupon of 100% cashback up to Rs. 150. The second was that I had a dark game, which we also have in our office. And you have to play up to 5 chances with a maximum cashback of 300 rupees. And along with that cashback that you win in the game, you will get a free coffee mark. So, I'll get into a bit of the observations that I had in over this period of 2 days. Network issues were prominent and common across all 3 brands. We all know 3G is still not very efficient in India. Time to register free download in case of Dyna or Dyna was long. For Swiggy, the time to place order was more and there were less numbers due to the cost involved since they were asking for a minimum order of 50 rupees. For Tiny Out, the time to play the game was involved and of course they lost 120 minutes because they were present only for lunch and dinner. <coughs> now, I pointed out a few metrics here, the marks distributed and the orders achieved. So this was done through the observations made that how much time each brand took to register and give a coffee mug to one individual consumer. So that was approximately 2 minutes for dine out, 4 to 5 minutes for Swiggy and 3 minutes for tiny out. The longer time period for Swiggy, why? Because they had to ensure that a 50 rupees order had to be placed and they had to recheck that sort of manual before they could issue a coffee mug. So let's get into some cost analysis. We have seen these metrics earlier. Staff at stall, rent, cashback. Now these are the various values or these are the various investments I would say that these brands put in in order to sustain this marketing campaign. So for staff at stall, the highest cost was Swiggy since they had more number of people employed at their stalls. For rent, it was dine out and Swiggy have worked for two days so they paid the equal and higher rent. The cashback was most for dine out. Uh, almost equal for tiny, tiny Owl and none for Swiggy since they did not have it in the cash bar, in the model. So Tiny Owl I mentioned 30 plus 10 because the, the moment you reach to that stall they will be immediately giving you a 100% cash back coupon. So that has been factored into it. The marks. So the cost of marks over here has been approximated on the basis of research done on uh, wholesale operations. So what sort of a uh, you know, cost would they incur on each coffee mark if they ordered a bulk order. So that was 21,000, 8400 and 21,000. So dine out and uh, dine out are more or less tied in this. Stall decoration. Uh, dine out was pretty simple. Uh, a, say, a pretty much simple table with 4-5 guys standing with a logo behind them. Uh, um, Swiggy was more or less pretty attractive. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the pics right now. But Swiggy had a huge uh, table with a huge 3D logo and LCD screens behind running Swiggy campaigns. So that was pretty much attractive. I mean, I would rate them equivalent to a KFC or a Magni. Uh, for Tiny Out, it was 5,000 because uh, it was pretty much similar to Dine Out, only with the exception of having a dart board game attached to the stall. The orders achieved. Now, you notice here that I have pointed these two figures in red for Swiggy. That is the mugs and the orders achieved. So what happened with Swiggy was, they were asking for a minimum order of 50 rupees. And they essentially recovered that cost through a minimum order of 50 rupees. So what happened is they got less number of consumers, but they recovered their costs, which becomes very important when you have to report this back to your investors. So the total amount coming here was more than one lakh for dine out, close to a lakh for tiny out, and approximately 50,000 to be specific, 48,000 for Swiggy. So that was like half the cost. We will also go into the non-tangible factors, some things which cannot be measured on the basis of data. So the first was stall attraction. Now based on the description that I have given to you, it was simple for dine out, pretty grand for Swiggy and moderate for tiny out. Customer profitability, grand for dine out. Why grand? Because the moment I reach the stall, I get a 100 rupees cash back and I get a free bar without doing anything. And after that I can completely forget about who dine out. Moderate was Swiggy because it, it involved some sort of process to be carried out. It involved an investment from my side that is end consumer, 50 rupees. And tiny one was pretty simple. I could have gone and played the game or I could have not. I could have simply received the cash back. So, up till now we have covered a bit of metrics, a bit of data into it and a bit of KPIs. So, what were the lead product marketing factors that I utilized here? One was experimentation. How? All three brands were doing the same thing essentially. They were giving out coffee mugs. But the method of giving out coffee mugs was pretty much different. 
their business strategy was different for their marketing campaigns. Customer feedback, well, I feel this is very, very essential and it was lacking on the part of all three banks. Metrics, we, we did see a lot of metrics here. So what could the three startups have done differently post this analysis? Plan less and do more. I'll come to this point. Adapt along the way, that is being agile. And I think the example would be tiny out. Reason being that they invested on a dart game board, they spent close to a lakh, yet and they spent a lot of cash backs, yet they did not have many consumers coming up. So I would say that I would date their marketing strategy as a fail. Capture customer customer feedback in real time. Now with dine out, I could immediately go to the stall, get a hundred rupees cash back and get a cup of coffee mug. So the process was pretty simple and less time consuming. But they had two days, two full days, 48 hours, and they were present in all the three brackets, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So essentially what I feel is, during the first day, they could have gone ahead and implemented their strategy. But along with that, in parallel, in real time, they should have collected some sort of customer feedback. Since they have three to five guys working on their stalls, one guy could have run around asking consumers later on, how was the experience? In any language, it doesn't really matter. I just need a verbal feedback at the end of the day. And you know, just to, just to have a basic analysis of what sort of strategy, what sort of success has the strategy reached. And if I feel that it is not working out properly, then on the second day, I would have probably gone ahead and made a slight modification to it. Probably I would have reduced the cashback to 50 rupees. Or probably I would have done the same thing as we started charging them for a minimum order and then giving them a coffee mug. So customer feedback in real time is very, very essential. So we have done a lot of analysis here. Let's get to the judgment. The paradigms. Now I rank them on the basis of three paradigms. One, plus consumer is the king. As I said, dine out was a clear cut winner here. I got a clear cut 100 rupees cash back and a coffee mug. And I forgot about it. Tiny was a runner up because